everybody, this is James Lindsay, and you are listening to New Discourses Bullets, which is where I give a short bullet point type summary of a single topic relevant to woke Marxism so that we can defeat it. And we're talking about the pendulum swing today. We all know about the pendulum swing. The pendulum is going to swing. The pendulum is going to swing. The left has pushed the pendulum so far, it's going to swing back to the right. And you probably think that I'm going to say something along the lines of, that sets us up for a huge amount of momentum that might get hijacked and taken in the wrong way, the wrong direction. In fact, maybe we're going to flip into something more fascist, as has happened repeatedly throughout history. But I want to talk about something a little more subtle instead. I think people are not maybe aware enough of that danger that as they need to be. As the momentum against the woke increases, it will be a real risk. It will be a real challenge to prevent us getting carried away with ourselves, getting caught up by a charismatic leader, especially if we get to the point where it seems very dangerous and very desperate and the pendulum swinging in kind of that classic sense. But I want you to understand that not only does that advantage the other side because they just need the constitutional system that we have destroyed. They don't care whether it gets destroyed from left or right or both at the same time. They just need our system destroyed. But, uh, that I want to talk more about how they use the pendulum swing so that it's not so naive. In fact, the relevant way to put it is that it's not so one-dimensional because they are operating in a multi-dimensional space and they're playing people very successfully. You've heard the other podcasts like your reaction is their real action, which is one of their principles. And that's actually based off of this principle of polarity that goes behind the scenes on almost all of their strategizing. And this pendulum swinging thing is actually more subtle than that. So unlike what I normally do, this podcast, if you are listening to it, you're missing out a little bit because I have to describe not just a picture, but an animation, which I'll try to do. But I'm going to actually on YouTube or, you know, whatever other video platforms, Rumble and so on, I want their this animation to be visible to you. So I'm going to try to present it that way to you, unlike my usual uh, presentations, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Because when you think of the pendulum swinging, you're thinking it's swinging back and forth, back and forth. So the left pushes the pendulum really hard to the left, and then it's going to swing back and hit them when it comes back. That is not how they do. That is not how the pendulum works. It's more complicated than that. It is multidimensional. So you can picture the pendulum swinging back and forth. If you push a pendulum bob, that's what it's called, the bob, it will swing away and it will come back and, you know, minus a little bit of the energy loss due to friction, it will come back roughly to the same spot that it was released from. In an ideal frictionless system, it would come back exactly to the spot that it was released from. Okay. Now I want you to picture that the thing that this pendulum bob is attached to is moving. So the pendulum swinging side to side, left to right, left to right. But meanwhile, the entire apparatus is moving forward. We'll say at a constant speed. I know this is a physics thing and don't get lost. So you have the pendulum swinging back and forth as the entire apparatus moves forward. So when they push the pendulum and it swings to the left, the whole thing moves forward. Let's say it takes 10 seconds for it to swing all the way to the left. And it moves forward by, you know, 10 inches while it does that. When it comes back, it's going to move forward another 10 inches. So it doesn't come back and hit the same place. It hits 20 inches further down the way. You see how that works? So the idea is that they're pushing the pendulum so that when it swings back, it doesn't hit them. It hits something else. And if you don't understand that this is their strategy, that this is at the very heart of your reaction is the real action, then you don't understand how the pendulum swing not only works in practice, political practice, but how it's going to get used against you. And you're going to fall into traps. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to get capitalized upon. What does that look like? So the simple provocations of Antifa are a good example. It turns out, actually, the whole thing that I was mentioning about, about it swinging back to the right and going overboard into fascism is actually an example, too. Um, because it's no longer swinging back and hitting the left. It's now swinging back and hitting the constitutional system that we have if it swings back into fascism. But what about Antifa? Antifa comes and they 
use what's called mid-level violence. They provoke and provoke and provoke. It's the finger in your face. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. And in fact, they might actually touch you, poke you, spray you with stuff, pour stuff on you, irritate you, yell at you, push you, all kinds of things. But what they're going to do, so that's them pushing the pendulum. You're the pendulum. They're putting energy into you to get you to react. And when you react, that's the pendulum swinging back. But what they're going to do is to make sure that it's framed so that the watching audience that's low information, that doesn't know what's going on until, as they say, some ish goes down. At the instant some ish goes down finally, all they see is this stuff that goes down. And so they set it up so that they, they, they provoke you, you react, they film you reacting, but not them provoking you. And so the pendulum swings back and hits you. You're now the person who started violence. You're now the person who escalated. It doesn't show them pushing you over the edge. It just shows them, it just shows you escalating. And so the pendulum comes back and hits you. That's how they do this. This is a deep set of principles in their toolbox of political warfare. Like I said, it's based off of a thing called the principle of polarity, that things will swing back and forth. It's also based off of what they call the principle of vibration. They want the vibrational energy, if we talk kind of in a mystical new age way, to shift from a lower state to a higher state or vice versa, so that when the swing back comes, it hits in a different place. Namely, it hits their enemies. This is how DEI works. This is how their programs in schools work and so on. Let me give you the DEI example. We're all very familiar right now with the fact that DEI makes uh, hostile working environments, right? This has now become visible to people that when they implement the DEI training and they implement the DEI practices and they have the DEI officers and all of this diversity, equity, inclusion stuff, that actually all of the relations within the office get more tense, worse, more racism, more sexism, more homophobia more fear to work together, more uh, tense office eggshells, walking on eggshells office environment. We know that this happens. Now, DEI sells itself as the cure to that problem. So they come in, they say, you have a problem. That's fake. They're swinging in the pendulum. We are the cure to that problem. And then they actually make that problem worse. And when they make that problem worse, that's the pendulum swinging back 20 inches down the line. When that pendulum swings back, now they're saying, oh my gosh, look how much racism is actually in the office. And the insinuation is that it was always there to begin with, and they've actually uncovered it. We need more DEI. That's the DEI pendulum scam. Race relations or sex relations or sexuality issues have gotten worse in the office. People are on eggshells. People are, are angry. There's This is a very angry, um, high-intensity high environment now where it used to be a chill office. We need more DEI to fix it. That's the scam. So it swings back and it actually, what they rig it up to be is it's the white supremacists in the office. It's the sexists in the office. It's the homophobes in the office. It's, as Mao might have it, the enemies of the people not going along with the new program that's causing this extra tension. If we all went along, we would have unity, but we're not all going along because some of you are racist, sexist, and so on. Some of you have unconscious biases you're not willing to challenge. It's your fault. And so they actually are able to get the pendulum to swing, cause racism, cause sexism, cause homophobia, cause a hostile working environment, swing back by getting it blamed on the people who aren't going along with the program. That's textbook Mao, by the way. That was what Mao did. Mao used his revolutionary cadres to attack the uh, enemies of the people, the counter-revolutionaries, to the bad elements, the right wing, and so on. He had his revolutionary elements attack them in the name of the workers and the peasants, which made those people angry at the workers and the peasants. And so they went after the workers and the peasants instead, and they said, look how much these enemies of the people hate the people. This is how you see with the anti-LGBTQ hate. Queer activists provoke. They go after children. They put drag queens, the whole thing. You know what all they're doing. It's in seriously intense, especially with the children. And then when that's them swinging the pendulum, when the pendulum swings back, they hide behind their tokens, the LGBTQ conglomeration behind this acronym, and they say that's anti-LGBTQ hate. You actually hate queer activism, but they make it out that you hate queer people. So the pendulum comes back and it swings at the wrong place, and then they say, oh my God, look, there's so much anti-LGBTQ hate, which is actually you disagreeing with their activism. You know it, but nobody 
that's low information gets it. So the pendulum swings back and hits you. That's how the pendulum game works. And we can do example after example after example. The schools are increasingly failing. They implement whole word reading or restorative justice, and nobody can read. Reading scores plummet, or the the behavioral situation in the school deteriorates. They become violent, dangerous places. Guess what that means? Well, that means that there are these huge problems with reading skills and with behavioral, and it all comes back to the fact that the kids are not grounded in social emotional skills in the first place. So we need more social emotional learning. The kids are developing anxiety complexes. And so what we need is more social emotional learning to deal with the destruction of the healthy learning environment that they had in the first place before the program. That's how the pendulum actually swings back. And that animation that if uh, I was able to pull it off, you've been watching this entire time, is the image of that. The pendulum isn't just swinging back and forth so that it swings away and then comes back and hits the people who swung it. It's swinging back and forth while the whole apparatus is moving forward. So they swing it and it comes back and hits somebody else, which they then use as the pretext to swing it again, which they then use as the pretext when it comes back to swing it a third time. And this is the nature of their grift. I did a podcast about this before called the SEL cycle, talking about how they use SEL specifically, social emotional learning in schools, to justify implementing more social emotional learning. See how many places you can think of. I mean, not to give you a silly homework exercise, but see how many places you can think of now where you see that the intent, the, the destruction that they bring is intentional, and then they're able to blame it on some scapegoat class or some scapegoat, scapegoat group, the racists, the people who wouldn't get the shot, whatever it is. And when it swings back, that justifies even more implementation of what they're doing. We have to crack down even harder on the people who are the good, normal people of the world. You're going to see that this takes place in every single domain of your life that tyranny has crept into, because this is one of their bread and butter techniques. And so the critical thing to keep in mind is that this, when we talk about the pendulum swinging, this is how it swings. It doesn't swing in a one-dimensional straight back and forth line. It swings in a two-dimensional S-shaped curve back and forth while moving forward to their agenda the whole time. And what you have to realize is that when that pendulum swings, if you want it to swing back and hit them, you have to convince all the people who are going to see what's happening that they pushed the pendulum in the first place. You have to actually show that they caused the provocation in the first place. That's what you would do with Antifa. They caused the provocation in the first place. So you have to get that provocation visible to their target audience before they can get your reaction visible. And then it falls flat on its face. You can do that by calling it out, by naming the dynamic, by catching it on film for fuller context, by showing examples of it occurring so that people are aware that that's the pattern, by doing things like this, by informing people that this is how they do their activism. Another thing with the whole swinging back into a different form of radicalization, left-wing radicalization causes right-wing radicalization. Well, that's the fascism route, is that you name the actual target. The actual target of these manipulations is in fact our existing constitutional system, and more importantly, our liberties and our ability to live independently. It is independence that they attack the most, which also includes, therefore, our liberties that secure our ability to live independently, because what they want is dependency on their system. So you have to be able to not fall into the desires that they're provoking your emotions, so you'll desire to use force back against them, when in fact what you have to do is advocate even more for the system they are trying to destroy. In other words, you have to know what their target is, protect that target, and discredit them in the process over and over and over again. So as I told Moms for Liberty uh, in their national convention last year when they had me speak, it is absolutely crucial that you learn to that you don't rise that you learn to do this that you don't rise to the provocation that instead you rise to the occasion the occasion calls for you to identify and expose agents provocateur and the methods that they use and the targets that they're hitting and how they're manipulating the situation so people can see it so that manipulative behavior can be stopped 
That's the only way. So the pendulum doesn't swing in one dimension. It swings at least in two. It's moving forward as it swings back and forth. If we were getting really broken into the details, they also change how long the bob is, so to speak. So it goes up and down and forward so that it hits whatever targets they want. They control all that motion. We're not going to go into all those silly details. The point is that it's not as simple as they swing the pendulum, so the pendulum's going to come back and hit them. They try to rig the system with activist momentum forward along an, a line of action so that when they swing the pendulum, it swings back to a different place, you know, two feet down the way that's going to hit one of their targets rather than hit them when it comes back. And you become the weapon or the tool to hit the other target that they want. That target is always our constitutional system at the bottom of it. It is always our individual liberties. It's always our individualism. It's always our independence and lack of dependency on them. Remember, one of the big announcements that they made a few years ago from the other side was a not a declaration of independence like we have in the United States, but a declaration of interdependence, meaning we are all dependent on one another in a system that's going to be coordinated, in other words, communism. So pay attention to how this pendulum swings, learn to spot it, learn to call it out, don't fall for it.